थैंक यू सर कुछ दिल से कहता हूं अही आवी ने बहुत सारू लगे तो थैंक यू गुजरात थैंक यू फॉर एवरीथिंग तो सिंस येस्टरडे यू हैव लिसनिंग टू आईडीज एंड वैक्सीनोलॉजी एंड इन मेनी ऑफ दीज केसेस you realize that we do not have a diagnosis some of the cases which are presented by baldev bhai today morning again abhe and while we were discussing this dr vijay vishwanathan was feeling very amused because he was he was thinking boss mere paas hi aoge so that is what i am going to precisely address in this panel discussion where we don't find a bug or an infection we as id people start looking further and that's where our colleagues come so the moral of this entire exercise would be do we involve them before we reach a kind of a this exhaustive investigations and do not uh, reach a diagnosis <clears throat> so before that let's recap now see these two pictures which look identical any difference you spot okay very very well done so these are actually infection mimics the findings are very subtle but yet we get confused so rightly said as an id or a general practitioner interested in id we all think fever means infection and the entire exercise of finding a bug is because you want to rationalize your treatment and rationality is only directed towards anti microbial or an anti viral usage because amr or the anti microbial resistance is always at the back of our mind if the problem starts when well, by end of first week you have a fever which is persisting there are no clinical signs and your routine workups for an endemic diseases or maybe in an outbreak situation you really don't find a clue then you start thinking is it a non infection and by that time the patient has already left you for good for a second opinion however at the same time a similar patient who is not happy with his earlier doctor comes back to you so let me tell you that while we keep on concentrating on these 50 to 60% of infections there is a sizable chunk which presents as fever but are non infections rheumatological disorders hemato oncology and sometimes undiagnosed so once this patient comes back to you invariably i say clinical evaluation has gone for a toss it's a forgotten part the new algorithm is you see the lab test do sometimes a relevant physical examination which is sometimes optional and then start taking a history which probably correlates with your lab rather than correlating a lab with your clinical evaluation so when this kind of uh, algorithm changes i am sure baba hachinson jiske clinical methods humne mbbs mein padhe that poor guy must be turning in his grave as to what has happened to modern mass medicine or speed of investigation we saw and you will see in the next slide so many investigations it always depends on parental anxiety or the doctor's anxiety rather the disease dictating as to what is to be done in this panel discussion we are not taking hlh because is that is too often uh, known to pediatrician so let me start with the two or three cases which will deliver the messages i want to give so three year old child fever for two weeks no localizing signs counts high polymorphonuclear platelets okay received various antibiotics repeat counts again except that the tlc polymorphonuclear is in there and with some increasing platelets a vidal which is positive and yet received two more antibiotics for a suspected enteric fever and it is now 3 weeks and the fever persists you revisit the case for all epidemiological clues which i will not go into the exercise but please when you revisit the case 
try and give due importance to the subtle signs which you probably overlooked in the earlier evaluation. For example, some kind of a rash which might have appeared during this illness, any missed lymphadenopathy, significant or insignificant, you decide, liver spleen which you probably overlooked or you thought was within the normal limits, and this particular patient we revisited and found a little rash. Some of the images, if you can appreciate the rash and some occipital alopecia, I really do not know what is the significance, but that was one finding. And what about a repeat hematology? Again, polymorphonuclear counts increasing, all inflammatory markers high, all attempts at finding a infection were negative and even a lymph node biopsy was done which was hyperplasia, reactive hyperplasia and bone marrow also, culture and histopathology and evaluation are normal. So to summarize, a child 3 weeks of fever now raised inflammatory markers with negative microbiology. So Dr. Uh, Vishwanathan, what next? Thank you uh, very much for the question. I was thinking whether I sit here or I sit there. We, we, because first reference comes to that, I thought we discussed yesterday horses are common than zebras. No, no, horses are common than zebras, donkeys are common than horses. That's the way to start off the thinking. Because by doing all that has been done in this story, most of the infections are out. The fever pattern becomes a very crucial thing to start uh, analysis of such cases, you know. So the please don't use methanamic acid. Please never use naproxen. It's only paracetamol. Rule number one because the fever pattern changes completely. This is a boy who's evolved over two three weeks, whose counts have evolved over two three weeks, and the fever pattern with the rash is very very typical. If you ask the history. The most illiterate patient with a din may bar fever aya. Oh, yeah, do bar fever aya. The importance of circadian rhythm. God gives cortisol at 8 a.m., melatonin at 8 p.m., other than pediatricians. Uh, and interleukin 6 at 6 p.m., which is why this evening rise of fever becomes very important. So, as a pediatrician, I can think of tuberculosis. I'm talking too much. This was working, I think. All right. So, so, so the the pattern here is important. If I ask how how is the fever, and I get an answer, if it's an intermittent quotidian fever, which means this child has only one or two spikes in a day. Rest of the time he's absolutely fine. That tells me a story. I correlate it with the rash, which is looking very, very macular kind of a rash. And once you hit the third week, all the uh, infections are out. So you will start thinking of a possible inflammatory illness of sorts. And when you see the blood test, the counts are increasing, platelets are increasing, acute phase markers are increasing, and ferritin is increasing. We heard yesterday, that when everything moves in one direction, I am very happy. You are looking at a possible systemic inflammatory disorder, most likely a systemic arthritis in evolution. And I rule out infections, I rule out a malignancy and then possibly proceed further. Okay, so Vishwanathan, uh, commenting on the pattern of fever, these days all patients are on antipyretics. Whatever you may recommend from the dice, so, is there any value to the pattern of fever during these days of uh, unscrupulous antipyretics? And number two, like you said, you think of these disorders. Could we have done it earlier than this? So, so I always keep saying that the parents and pediatricians want resolution of the problem and the rheumatologist wants evolution of the problem. It's just a wordplay, but it makes a lot of sense. A three-week fever is not sepsis because he looks too happy to be a bacteremia. Can it be a malignancy? Theoretically, yes. I am imaging, I am biopsying, etc. But most of these kids will be very happy for 
23 hours out of 24 hours. That's the key message. Whether you use methanamic acid or an aproxin, this is a child who will have a 104 fever once or twice a day and the rash will accompany the fever with or without joints, etc. But the remaining 23 hours, the child is happy. Okay. That is the age-old theory that it's so, inflammatory. Anyway, we did this and we asked our rheumatologist friend to please intervene and give his opinion. Like uh, Vishwanathan says, you do think of these rheumatological or a connective tissue disorders. But then when the patient came back with that slip, there were such large profile of other investigations which were written. ANA profile, ANA. And you see this uh, big list. So, and cost good amount of money. So, would we be more selective in these investigations to clinch our diagnosis? Absolutely. The, the, the total cost of all this will be roughly around 22 to 25,000 rupees, whereas naproxen costs 35 rupees. I'm trying to again teach a bit of finances to the Gujarati, which is a bit odd. I will not do a single of the tests that are mentioned here. It is very, very clinical. This child, the only test I might do is a ferritin, which has been done. And because, and don't ignore a high ferritin just because it's an acute space marker. Like a pediatrician, when he sees an SGPT of 100, dengue hepatitis is his diagnosis. I am like, is it an HLH in evolution? This 100 will become 1000. So please, uh, respect the high ferritin because the clinical pattern suggests this is a intermittent quotidian fever, probably an IL-6 mediated disease. Ferritin has come 500. Do not sit on it because that 500 will soon become 5000 like we discussed yesterday. A macrophage activation like story. None of the antibodies are needed in this and the rule of thumb in pediatric rheumatology is when the counts are high, platelets are high, Please don't do an ANA. ANA is as a prototype to be done in lupus-like disease where the counts are low. And as we know, 25% of kids ANA can be positive. So high counts, no ANA. There is nothing called a vasculitis panel. And APLA, ANCA, etc. also extremely rare. And you will go by clinical features before choosing any of them. I have not seen an ANCA in my life, 15 years of practice. So don't do an ANCA blindly. So I think a very important message which has been delivered that this battery of all these antibodies are really not required because we have already almost squeezed the patient in three weeks getting so many tests done and the, the presented pattern is reasonably good enough for them to take a decision and start treatment. So if you see this patient, he had uh, high TLCs with a polymorphonuclear, hemograms were done, there were no abnormal cells. So I am sure you would start uh, any of these uh, corticosteroids basically. So uh, is that message can be delivered that bone marrow in such a patient is a must before you think of putting them on steroids? I am still at you. Okay. Yeah. Today is my lottery day. So uh, in an ideal world, I would probably uh, do a bone marrow more from a medical legal point of view, especially if I'm thinking of steroids and or biologics. But if I'm only trying to use naproxen as a starting story, uh, briefly, this is a situation which is tailor-made for naproxen. I would not do a bone marrow. But if I give naproxen to this child, once I have ruled out cultures and infections, Three time fever will become twice, will become once in three days. So even a continuous fever might become intermittent quotidian, which is like a kind of a therapeutic way of finding out uh, the diagnosis. And answer the question short, in brief, no bone marrow if steroids are not needed. But if naproxen fails or if I am entering the, uh, or the, uh, the phase where I might need steroids, Possibly, in addition to a marrow, I might do a CT scan just to get out latent tuberculosis or active TB as a potential, more as a complicating story than actually the disease. So, another important message, and now I refer to my other colleagues, 
राकेश एंजलिका और अनुराग एनी कमेंट्स ऑन दीज टू इम्पोर्टेंट मैसेज डिलीवर्ड बाई विजय uh history about the rash is very important because the thing is most of the parents they give history of rash and they are also evanescent they appear at the peak of the fever and they disappear so that is also very important along with all the investigation and the face markers we had done okay so well taken so again vishwanathan i am at this case primarily with view because then when the paper came back with all these uh, antibodies then i also had sometimes i find sojia which is systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis someone writes gia someone writes anthocytosis someone writes jra all these names to me are probably synonyms especially sojia looks more apparent because i have more systemic symptoms rather than a musculoskeletal symptoms so what's your take on uh, this kind of a nomenclature so all this nomenclature is very very specific you might need to invite me for one more full day of academics to sort it out but cut the story short sojia is a term we will not use from tomorrow it's the current term we use is systemic arthritis or sji the reason is simple that not all of them will have arthritis at the onset it may never happen many kids will just have the systemic features which will burn out in 6 months of time so the only type of arthritis technically which can present as a fever is a systemic arthritis occasionally you will have a polyarticular the rheumatoid arthritis or ra factor positive jia which may have fevers but not such high spiking fevers and the b27s can occasionally have an explosive onset of fever but generally as a rule only sji so if you are lucky high fever with joints with the evanescent rash that was discussed that's only one diagnosis it is sji okay so thank you i think uh, that's enough for this kind of a case just to uh, update you that the most of these are actually immune dysregulations which may be precipitated by any of the events before or some autoimmune component we'll not go into the details and the pattern of treating is nsaids followed by steroid disease modifiers and biologicals which we leave to the judgment of our rheumatological friends so uh, angelica this is a scenario which is often seen in clinical practice invariably young children below 5 years with high grade continuous fever and there is some evanescent rash or the rash which may persist there are no respiratory sign symptoms however for the illness the child has the child appears very irritable and very very kind of an irritable because the limbs are aching and there you may find certain peripheral edema the rash may be pleomorphic you may have a, a vasculitis kind of a rash involving your ear lobes or it may be an evanescent maculopapular rash sometimes ecchymotic which is seen in vasculitic rash pomo plantars involved and you don't find any significant nodes in anthem musculoskeletal system involvement any guesses angelica yes sir a uh, young child with fever uh, with rash no coryza and cough so viral infections as a first possibility would be almost ruled out uh, there are some findings that we can see here we can see mucocutaneous fissuring uh, we can see a red tongue there is some conjunctivitis a uh, child is irritable so what comes to my mind is uh, an inflammatory disorder maybe a vasculitis something like uh, might be kawasaki disease although all the features are not there uh, which we need to classify it as so, kawasaki's disease so we all think because of because adenopathy is not there yeah. so we all think of kawasaki so this case was not to diagnose kawasaki but to let you know that these are certain subtle signs which help you in diagnosis whether it is rash whether it is colitis rash can be of different forms bulbar conjunctivitis some glossitis colitis and angulostomatitis so these are important clues of uh, mucocutaneous involvement cervical adenopathy and you see that bcg reactivation which is seen in very few but it is invariably mentioned and this is what happens post the disease what we typically describe as a sung a uh, subungual inflammation while i show a child with generalized exfoliation also after kawasaki so the question was not diagnosing kawasaki 
question was that we are now so sensitized with kawasaki that many of our colleagues say boss incomplete kawasaki hai because at the back of their mind is only ivig so dr anurag aap incomplete kawasaki diagnose karte hain apne department mein uh, yes sir but it's very late like first we go with other diagnosis when we don't find any other diagnosis clinching us then we really go for the kawasaki okay so how many of you really believe in incomplete kawasaki raise your hands please raise your hands okay sizable number so vishwanathan is there an entity like incomplete kawasaki or it is a hidden desire to start ibig i wish i had some shares in reliance or intas or whatever but unfortunate part is doctors don't make money out of ivig and if ever there was one disease where i might be proactive than be reactive it is kd rule number 1 is this rule number 2 is think that all the red lips are probably you have to rule out kawasaki than ruling in a scarlet because ruling out kd becomes easier than ruling in scarlet for obvious reasons that was discussed in the morning now incomplete by definition is you don't fulfill four out of five you have one or two or three with evidence of coronary changes now that one or two or three ghar mein aankh lal ho gaya tha hospital mein aate aate cha ho gaya aur nikal gaya parents have been noticed you probably are not seeing how do i start adding up the numbers so it's very so the approach has to be there are certain very definite uh, patterns where you will think of kd winter season is very very unique i say november bundhu season in gujarat strawberry season in mahabaleshwar up to valentines day is very very kawasaki season recognize the 1 to 5 year old less than 1 year old and more than 5 year olds extremely high risk for incomplete disease and long term morbidity and then i i think it's a thin line between over diagnosing and under treatment because finally it boils down to finances like vaccines chahu bhi to bhi main ivig nahi de sakta aise situations aata hai and 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 the affluent ones want to give ivig because they have googled up more about kd than i have so it's it's a clinical call and uh, so adding fuel to the fire is our pediatric cardiologist incomplete kawasaki bola और वो आके बोला बॉस कॉरोनरी थोड़ा डायलेटेड तो है लेकिन जेड स्कोर 2.5 नहीं हुआ वाइल विश्वनाथन सेज डायलेटेड कॉरोनरीज आर ऑलमोस्ट इवन इफ यू हैव एन इनकम्प्लीट के डी कॉल्स फॉर अ ट्रीटमेंट बट वॉट टू डू अबाउट दिस स्टेटमेंट बॉस डायलेटेड तो है लेकिन जेड स्कोर 2.5 नहीं है वॉट वॉट डू यू सजेस्ट अबाउट दिस डोंट चेंज द डायग्नोसिस एंड डोंट चेंज द कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट because over time you will develop a comfort factor with a particular kind of a person he interprets you you recognize his patterns and like the radiologist i call the cardiologist objects in the mirror closer than they appear matlab dilated to hai kaise treat karna hai tum dekh lo right so it's always that what is my policy is i kind of try to bias the cardiologist many times if it's a new guy i say that i feel this is kd but may not have a heart and then the z score will come as 2.5 if i say i feel it's kd and i am pretty sure you are going to give me a z score of 5.5 he will oblige by giving me a 6 ka z score right so as a pediatrician who's practicing who seeing 100 kids in a day keep a low threshold or keep a low uh, uh, high index of suspicion go by the clinical findings and and think that you know and and god has given us 10 days of time it's before 10 days you are supposed to act in a not so ideal world right so go clinically see the features see the pattern phone a friend if needed give the cardiologist his opinion let him give his opinion and then try to correlate your findings with the z scores and the z score values have changed so, so, uh, so that's the way i would deal with it what he tells us is take an individual decision do not ignore these findings at the uh, at the same time don't be carried away by that desire to use ivig 
you raised a very pertinent point that KD is seen more during winters and that is the time when we have all those respiratory flu viruses circulating. So thereby kind of giving a hypothesis that they may be related. So I write uh, prior viral infections which are too common. We knew we related KD type phenotype with the corona. Now yesterday our Baldev Bhai told us a KD after dengue. So uh, maybe uh, next meeting I tell you Miss E, which was after EB virus. So this Miss A, B, C, D, E to Z is going to increase or we put a stop here? So for a start, I think if you diagnose MIAC, it's going to be a big mishap. From today, I think at least on the, if I represent the Pediatric Rheumatology Society of India, I am going to say it's time that we stand up again for one minute and pay obituary to MISC, which means I have not seen an MISC in the last at least 8 to 12 months. We have not seen MISC and chances are that what we are diagnosing as MISC today might be a KD for sure because forget the genetics, forget the exome sequencing. For me, what is KD, what is MISC is nothing but a post-infectious inflammatory vasculitis period. If I use the word MISC, it's giving me a license to use solumedrol. That's the biggest problem I have with this disease. And there is no reason why we can't use solumedrol instead of IVIG except for want of trials and evidence. So, no using the terminology MISC or MISD. Having said that, KD has been reported in association with dengue fevers, Salmonella typhi. In fact, I have had a kid with amoebic liver abscess having significant coronary aneurysms. So it can be associated, but whether it's causative or can be correlated is up for discussion. So thank you, and I think uh, we'll stop here. Just to last message would be that most of our miss have now gone on to become misses. So probably forget about miss in the near future. Otherwise, we'll have that A to Z. So, uh, uh, let's say, Rakesh, what is really not KD? Uh, uh, the typical KD has a fever for five days and those uh, five out of four symptoms. So, executive conjunctivitis, that is purulent conjunctivitis is not KD. Then, executive uh, pharyngitis, uh, uh, generalized lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly. These yeah. are the points when uh, we should not be considering KD. And the age, age, what we say below five years, we are considering more as KD. Yeah. So these are some of the points which exclude KD. So you must remember those who are in favor of an incomplete KD sometimes rely on this. So let's just go one, on to so a just one third point. Uh, yeah. uh, the previous slide, uh, remember the sandpapery rash. All scarlets will probably have sandpapery rash, but a few KDs can still have sandpapery rash. That's the message. So just because you see a sandpaper, please don't be in a hurry to diagnose scarlet fever. And the corollary to do to, do, to that is the best of strawberry tongues eventually end up being scarlets and not Kawasaki's. Yeah, but scarlets invariably from a sandpaper-like rash would also have an exudative pharyngitis which is typically not seen in KD. So you take that sandpaper rash in conjunction with your other findings. Next case, seven years, fever for three days, had something suggestive of an acute cervical lymphadenitis, was put on cloxacillin in the clinic, and thinking that it is likely to be strep or staph, which is covered by cloxacillin. Three days later, reviewed in clinic, fever persisting, high-grade lymphadenitis, the lymphadenitis was settling, but the child was still sick looking. There was a mild maculopapular erythematous rash with bilateral conjunctival congestion. And as an ID specialist, we thought probably this has been a source of a step or staph which has gone on to a sepsis. So we admitted the patient deteriorated, had a lot of instant intensive care issues. Echo showed cardiac involvement. However, coronaries were normal, more kind of a uh, myocarditis which was there, chest x-rays, NAD, and this was the pattern of uh, your uh, hemogram, LFT, KFTs were okay, but cardiac enzymes were very high, including a pro-coagulant state as determined by dimers. 
Pro and IL-6 high and this was during a COVID season. So we just said, so uh, uh, Dr. Anurag, you have Miss C. Yes, sir. So compatible? Pardon? So is this compatible with the Miss C? I yes, say it, this it, is, it goes fever. So all infections negative and you know the diagnosis there was the CDC or a WHO criteria. Uh, IVIG and methyl prednisolone we used left and right but uh, this has partially been answered that MIS is was a definite entity during COVID time but probably it is a misnomer now and we should forget about MIS C and the other evolving alphabets uh, these were the definitions so uh, Vishwanathan MIS C during COVID and actual KD type phenotypes. So, the way to understand is either we just pass on to the next question. Missy doesn't exist anymore. But the way I used to think about MISC was it's KD with encephalitis or GI or some other system. It's a very easy way to understand. But the dramatic presentation often used to segregate the KDs because the, the KDs usually give you time before they start getting complicated. It's the second week which usually you start seeing the leukocytosis, thrombocytosis, etc. Whereas all the MISCs had this kind of a presentation. The platelets used to start low, the white cells used to start low in the first week and by the time day 5 to day 7, they would crash in the ICU with shock, hypotension, a very high pro-BNP suggestive of myocarditis. So clinically they may look similar. The treatment wise, probably it's just a matter of tweaking IVIG steroids, give the steroids, control hemodynamics, then give IVIG or both. So that's the way I looked at it. But eventually, I guess in the current day and age, you will, a child who comes with fever and gets shocky on day three, day four, you will probably call it KD shock syndrome and still follow the usual protocol of IVIG with or without steroids. So, uh, I move on to this next case. Uh, somehow that photograph has uh, got missed. It was an adolescent girl about 16 years, well built. Uh, fever for almost one month with some lymphadenopathy. The hemograms were normal except that initially there was a leukopenia, mildly elevated transaminases with LDH borderline high, CRP high, multiple lymph nodes, FNAC was done outside. Uh, uh, which was reactive hyperplasia. So all these VCA was positive, EB, CMB, IgM. So we investigated extensively for all those endemic and uh, outbreak diseases, but found everything negative, except CT abdomen showed lymph, lymph nodes, which were homogeneous, mesenteric, peripotal. So we also, since it was four weeks of illness, we did some of those uh, uh, nuclear antibodies and others, which was absolutely normal. Immunoglobulins, I'll refer to immunodysregulation. We ruled out echo because yesterday uh, we missed a case of endocarditis just because echo somehow was not done. Here also the heart was normal, yet we did an echo. And we thought of these possibilities. And to show you these diagrams, X-ray chest normal. And if you see, uh, the CT image of the neck, you have uh, those uh, multiple lymph nodes in low down in the neck, which appeared homogeneous. So, adolescent girl, 16 years, well preserved, infective markers negative, just uh, moving around the clinic, very happy, not very sick, with some lymph nodes which were homogeneous, hemograms normal. What do we think of? Sir, it's been a one month illness, child is well, so infections are almost ruled out. Second possibility in this case with multiple lymphadenopathy, especially the cervical and other places, we should think of malignancies like lymphoma. And um, inflammatory disorders definitely come, but uh, we have been investigated and SLE we think we can rule it out from the investigations, otherwise SLE would be a possibility. There were no markers for SLE. Sir, uh, history uh, is also very important over here yeah. because... Uh, uh, the weight loss pattern, the trend, the... Uh... Nothing, nothing. Very well, adolescent girl, beautiful adolescent girl, in fact, I would say. Just, uh, you know, visiting clinic every time for a fever, but no localizing signs except for these small lymph nodes. So even FNAC, which was done outside, uh, showed only reactive kind of a hyperplasia. Any guesses? Uh, 
it is not infection so, is so it is not lymphoma it is not hematom uh, kind of hematologic one condition biopsy yes sir abscission biopsy there is one condition which strongly mimics lymphoma which can be differentiated only by the biopsy that is a kikuchi Why disease biopsy? it is curative as well as uh, diagnostic there were multiple lymph nodes abdomen also neck also so Oh, this is uh, the thoracal lymphadenopathy. See, I only wanted to highlight this point. We invariably do an FNAC with the where the sample may be picked up for a, a bug, but to detailed histopathology after an FNAC is sometimes misleading. So this kind of a patient where hematological is one possibility, or uh, something other than that is a possibility with all other clues negative or oh, see we did an excision biopsy and it was necrotizing uh, lymphadenitis which you all know is a rare disease kikuchi fusimoto's disease and uh, dr uh, vishwanathan is that uh, is that commonly seen or a rarity probably a horse it's not a donkey it's not a zebra it's a, it's definitely existent and the clues were very obvious right from the slide number 1 the slide number 1 said there was fever but the leukopenia you know so this is a very typical situation 3 4 weeks of fever with low counts platelets which are less than 2 lakhs negative crp and a slightly raised esr in my books is sle unless proven otherwise so there are enough reasons to suspect L for ladki, L for leukopenia, L for low counts. You will start thinking in terms of SLE. Having said that, adolescents with such kind of fever, please, my my uh, dictum is think of malignancy, rule out tuberculosis, end up diagnosing rheumatology. So even if the child doesn't have anything to suggest a lupus-like disorder, I will still start from the site of crime. And like sir said. always get the node out because the whole lymph node architecture has to be analyzed for either a granuloma or a necrotizing histiocytic lymphadenitis and fnac is not good enough and then once i have done this i might subject this girl to a naproxen trial this child settles on its own kikuchi confirmed doesn't settle or comes back again think of kikuchi please rule out lupus that's the standard thing so therefore the pattern it is not that i showed you a kikuchi but yet if you see the bottom message we think of all those which is now sjia o is removed sle like presentation in an adolescent girl but we had done all the evaluation there was nothing uh, involved like you see all those nuclear antibodies as well as eye examination immunoglobulin so everything possible was done endocarditis you should not be missing HLH invariably, I told you we are not going to discuss, but we have seen it too often after these the common tropical illnesses and other diseases like sarcoidosis, Kawasaki. We never thought of Kikuchi, but a tissue with a full lymph node excised and architecture seen, in fact, gave us the diagnosis. So, message is we don't jump on to rare diseases like Kikuchis, but we do it after we have considered all these. Uh, possibilities in a rational manner so uh, spot case dr anurag high fever similar like i presented a kd high fever persistent mucocutaneous involvement conjunctival congestion uh, cobner's phenomena or acantholysis you know you just stroke a finger and the skin almost peels off like in uh, those talk those uh, 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 so the SSS you see with staff, and not extensive this kind of a rash, and these are the images. Any guesses, uh, doctor? Any any history of drug? Most of the people keep on taking drug. I don't have this in this particular case, but uh, okay. Maybe Steven Johnson. Steven Johnson. So this was Steven Johnson oblique ten. So again, the question, Vishwanathan. SJS versus ten, same spectrum or different entities? Not the right person to ask. I've never had a busier OPD than today. Uh, <laughs> simple story. What to me they are all inflammatory problems, and I have seen kids getting referred as SJS or ten. But then just have a look at the face. 
If I disregard the rest of the body and the child, you will see a butterfly rash. If I see the whole body in toto, I would probably get lost into this kind of uh, uh, nomenclature. But I would imagine that if you Google up, lupus can present with SJS, mycoplasma can present with rash and mucositis, M I R M. And I, it, it's more a uh, matter of, yeah, there are certain clues which we can have the rash starting from the trunk versus involvement of mucositis. But to me, I guess it's, it's more about additional clues that you get from the other history and clinical findings. To me, SJS 10 articarial vasculitis, they all are in the same chapter. Just a, a, a good history with examination and then targeted investigations. So uh, I think I'll conclude here with a message that our rheumatologist friend cannot remove lupus out of his mind. Three minutes, sir. If I had Hello. a dermatologist sitting in the panel, he would say, no boss, SJS here 10, whatever you say. And as far as the terminology is concerned, please, erythema multiforme, minor, major, 10, SJS, they are almost same spectrum, some clinical variations, some hypothesis about its causation. However, invariably, steroids are contraindicated and IVIG is used or misused in these particular cases. So I'll stop here to accept to give you uh, some pearls of wisdom at the end of the day. And then we can have one or two questions from the panel also, uh, from the open house. So if acute onset high fever, short duration, please rule out infections, which may be any bug. By the end of 4th, 5th, 6th day, most of these viral infections tend to recede and your enteric fever or start suspecting TB depending upon your epidemiological clues which might be there. However, by the end of one week, most of these routine endemic infections can be ruled out because I am sure by that time you have done a culture also and uh, positive or typhoid or whatever you are uh, 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 most concerned about. So start thinking TB seriously and some of the emerging zoonotic diseases, whether it is rickettsia or other zoonotic like brucella. Persistent fevers in a known disease, please think of immune mediated complications. What I often refer to as an immune dysregulation. Now included in this spectrum are by probably HLH, encephalitis and all other possibilities, osteitis. So here you will find as I uh, gave a message earlier, high inflammatory markers and negative infection markers. But throughout your exercise, please keep on looking for a localization. Because your pallor, bleeding, hepatosplenomegaly, lymphadenopathy starts giving a clue towards your hematological disorders. So never miss that. Musculoskeletal systems. Remember Vijay Vishwanathan. At the same time, remember Brucella, Leptospira, and sometimes even in influenza. Bone marrow, if you think you need to start steroids, and that would be all from me. Thank you, friends.